Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today's video is for the people. I've gotten a lot of comments and uh, messages from you guys asking for my recommendations if you are starting to get into perfume. You want likable fragrances, things that are crowd-pleasing, beginner-friendly, I got you. And I have a bunch of different categories, like I have a shit ton of perfumes to go over, so. I'm gonna hash it out, kind of like quicker reviews because we have a lot to get through. And I'm very confident that I can find something in here for you because I have excellent taste. So let's start off with vanilla. Everyone loves vanilla. If you don't love vanilla, you are an anomaly. I have a ton of different types of vanilla as well, so let's get into it. The first bunch that I'm going to discuss are these babies right here. Kaoli's Vanilla 28, Elizabeth and James Nirvana Bourbon, and Guerlain's Spiritus de Blevigny. All of these vanillas kind of fit within the same scent family. They are by no means dupes of each other, but they vibe. So I'm gonna get into the differences, all right? Kaoli's Vanilla 28 is the best simple vanilla extract type of fragrance you can find. Um, it definitely has a strong brown sugar quality to it. It has vanilla orchid. It's warm and ambery in the base. It has a touch of a boozy quality. Just absolutely mouthwatering, addicting. You'll get compliments like crazy. This works for a huge age range. This layers with absolutely everything. Incredible, 10 out of 10. Nirvana Bourbon, this is for you if you want a woody vanilla, and this is more so woody than it is vanilla. It's based around the note of oak. This is a very simplistic blend. It's literally oak, vanilla, and tuberose, but I don't get tuberose at all. So if you like woody vanillas, bam. Spiritus Doble Vigny is gonna be a step up in complexity compared to those two, um, but I still think it's extremely beginner friendly. It's just gorgeous. So if you like the sound of a vanilla extract, very natural smelling, woody, you get benzoin, so it has a gorgeous, ambery, resinous, balsamic feel to it. You get this very likable, sweetened incense note. People will actually tell me that I smell like vanilla bean ice cream when I wear this. I get mad compliments. Everyone wants to know what this is. When it warms up on your skin, it's just absolutely mouthwatering. Then we have Jessica Simpson's Fancy. This is an absolutely incredible celebrity fragrance. I literally only have this and Ariana Grande Cloud 2.0 Intense celebrity wise in my collection because you know most of them are just they're just not making it they're not doing it and I need my fragrance to be doing the most and she is excellent so if you want a really affordable caramely vanilla with a gorgeous like bit of fun, playful fruitiness. There's apricot, there's red berries. You get some likable light white florals in here that are not identifiable to me at least. And then you get a beautiful warm amber and sandalwood in the base. This is absolutely gorgeous. Next vanilla is a summery salty vanilla. So this is Lancome's Idol Aura. I think this is highly underrated in the YouTube fragrance community, but I'm pretty sure the last time I checked Ulta, it was this close to having five stars within thousands of reviews. You guys, this is incredible. This is absolutely my choice of a salty, vanilla, summery fragrance. It just smells happy. It's gonna put you in a good mood. You get a very likable, fresh jasmine note in here. It's clean, it's musky, and the vanilla in here is like a soft, powdery, dainty vanilla. And it's not overload on salt, by the way. Also, what I appreciate is that this is a summer vanilla that does not smell like sunscreen. It's giving you all the summer vibes. But there is no copper tone here, baby, all right? I have tried so many sunscreeny fragrances and I'm over it. Give me something else. Another summer fragrance 
and this is a summer gourmand. This literally screams the color yellow. This is Sol de Janeiro's Sol Cherosa 62, and this smells like their iconic, infamous boom boom cream. It just smells like good times. This also has a really yummy, addictive, nutty quality to it. You get pistachio and almond, and I'll I'll just I'll just put it out there. I'm usually not the one for nutty fragrances. Like if there is a dominant nutty note, I am nut about it. <laughs> Ew. <clears throat> um sorry. But this is gorgeous. It's not nut overload. It's the perfect amount of nut. We get a good nut balance. And besides that, this is very caramel and vanilla centered. It's so creamy and likable and oh man. If you are looking for a summer freshie and you love coconut, say no more because this is hands down the best coconut fragrance there is, Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria Coconut Fizz. Also, I received word the other day that Guerlain made the decision to discontinue coconut fizz, ginger picante, and passiflora. I am raging. I'm, I'm raging mad. I've already kind of gone through my grief stage, which is why I'm not bawling or screaming or making a scene at this current moment. Also, because this is going to be on the internet for the general public to see. It's, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I am going to be buying multiple backup bottles of this because I fly through this fragrance because it is my number one summer fragrance of all time. Of course, I have beautiful, romantic, whimsical, happiness memories with this fragrance because it is associated with kawaii, with the love of my life. Anyway, I just wanted to mention it, so get your hands on it while you can. They're still very much in stock at all of their regular retailers, so I don't think it's anything to panic about, like scurry around, rack up your credit card bill. So I believe you have some time. I think they're just gonna be phasing them out. So keep an eye open. Get this beauty while you can. It is literally a masterpiece, like no joke. This is a simple composition, but don't kid yourself. This is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. This is the most natural, stunning coconut water scent. Um, and I know that Aqua Allegorias are known for like really poor longevity, but honestly, this one's not bad. This has moderate performance. I overspray with this and I'll be smelling it on myself all day. So this one's better compared to the majority. You get a light, crisp, clean, soft freesia note. It's a touch woody. You get a little bit just of this like fresh citrus burst at the top from the bergamot. It has a clean, fresh, musky quality to it. The tonka bean just gives it an ever so slight bit of sweetness. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely incredible. Okay, we're moving on to the classics, to the timeless, to the chic, just exuding I am woman. The icon, the legend, Miss Extraordinaire. This is, uh, you already know. Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle, this is the intense version. I recommend the original and the intense. Speaking on the intense for a moment, this is definitely a dominant patchouli based fragrance, but it's very likable. It's not a dirty patchouli at all. It's so classy. You get some beautiful florals in here, rose and jasmine. There's a lot of zesty, just classy, clean citrus notes, and then sweetened up with tonka bean and vanilla. So in comparison to the original, this has the vanilla amped up. I would also say that this is a touch more modern. The original is more citrusy, everyday appropriate, every occasion. I mean, really this is too, but comparing the two, this is more 
of like a fall winter version. If you like the idea of wearing Chanel, but you don't want to buy that because everyone has Chanel, 1000% get Chloe Nomad Absolute. It's within the same lines where you're just getting this woman's perfume kind of vibe. It's just so timeless and classy. The oak moss note just makes this fragrance. It brings it to another level. It makes it unique and so likable. It gives it this like aromatic earthiness. Um, that isn't overwhelming or too much. It's fresh, it's clean, you get sandalwood, musk, and then mirabelle plum, which is an addictive, beautiful citrus note. If you want to smell elegant, you have to go for the Nomad range. The original is beautiful as well. This is more woody, the original is more citrusy. The Mongerlans, you know I'm obsessed because I have both. They pretty much have exactly the same notes. I'm gonna go over the original real quick first. Mongerlan is your lavender vanilla with a very likable approachable lavender. It's nothing too harsh or masculine. It's a beautiful floral perfume. You have rose, jasmine, iris, and all the notes blend together so beautifully. Like nothing pops too harshly. Um, the iris makes it just a little bit powdery. It's a bit woody. And the intense is very similar, but this is your creamier, sweeter, more vanilla version. It has a touch of a white chocolate vibe. It's more cozy, intimate, date night, where this would be more date day. Um, I mean, this would be perfect for a signature scent, both of these. Enormous compliment getter. I literally get a compliment every single time I wear these. Prada La Femme, this is your vanilla, yellow floral, creamy, clean, slightly soapy, another classy fragrance, a little bit powdery from the iris as well. If you need a staple that's just gonna go well in every situation all year, you want that signature scent, but maybe you don't wanna smell like a perfume because I would categorize Coco Mademoiselle and Chloe Nomad kind of in that category. This is excellent. Zara's Fashionably London smells so much more expensive than it is. Like 10 out of 10, they killed that one. It is so elegant and gorgeous and bridal. It really smells similar to Delina La Rose, kind of like in the first half of the fragrance and then more so Delina's dry down in Fashionably London's dry down. It's not a full on dupe, but similar. You get this beautiful dew covered rose. It's lovely, it's not mature, it's not too heavy. It has a fresh muskiness to it, and there's no lychee listed, but like I swear there's lychee in here. <laughs> you get that zingy, mouth-watering fruitiness that only lychee can bring. As it dries down, a woodiness comes through. It gets creamier, a touch of sweetness. It's so elegant. Like it's honestly perfect for a bride, but also like just perfect year round, perfect for a signature scent. If you like your floral fruity fragrances, Parfum de Marly Casilli is the one to go for. This just smells like unripe, kind of tart peaches to me and some beautiful florals. The florals smell pink to me. They're very delicate, light, girly. It's nothing indolic, heavy, or overwhelming. Um, there's also frangipani in here, which gives it this a little bit of like a tropical creamy vibe. The vanilla is the cherry on top to this fragrance. It honestly makes it. Also, I've said this before, but if you have Kaoli's Vanilla 28, you have to layer it with this because it, it brings it to a whole nother level. Like personally, that's what makes it a 10 out of 10 fragrance for me. It has a little bit of sandalwood to ground the fragrance. Um, and then the red currant is another fun, kind of sour, fruity note to this. So you have to be down with like a little bit of tang, but it's very likable, it's interesting. I get a lot of compliments from men when I wear this. It's happy, it's playful, it's approachable, it's feminine. If you want flirty, ultra girly, sweet, like you literally smell like candy. 
you have to go for a flower bomb. There are a lot of florals listed in here, but I, I'm gonna be real with you to my nose. This is mainly delicious, sugary sweet. It's the orchid note in here that just, oh my gosh, gives it this addictive floral sweetness. The vanilla definitely contributes to that as well. And this is also a patchouli based fragrance. So that really gives it its kick, um, its power. You only need a couple of sprays of this and it will fill a room. You will leave a trail. I love the tea note in here. That gives it a little bit of uniqueness and edge. Ariana Grande Cloud 2.0 Intense. Such a beloved fragrance. If you want something airy and sweet and whimsical, this is it. This and the original are great, but I really do prefer this one. It lasts a lot better. This has more of a warm, cozy, ambery vibe. It's more woody. The whipped cream and cream of coconut note is, oh honey, just scrumptious. Delightful. Oh, and praline and vanilla orchid telling you it's sweet but it's not sickeningly sweet it's not heavy like i said it it smells magical i feel like if a fairy and a munchkin living in a candy land had a baby it would be this <laughs> and it has a very nice lavender note just to tone it down a bit make it even more cozy it's like a sweet blanket being wrapped around you dossier's oriental cherry this is a perfect dupe for tom ford's lost cherry now here's the thing i think that this is a very likable beginner friendly scent however you need to love the idea of a very sweet cherry liqueur scent. If that is you, this is you. <laughs> Honestly, don't pay attention to the notes at all. I am telling you that's what it is, honey. So bear in mind that it is a very sweet cherry scent. I personally don't like to wear it on its own because it's too sweet for me, also a bit too linear for my taste, so I love this for layering, like literally layering perfection the layering queen but i know a lot of people adore tom ford's lost cherry like people with all assortments of knowledge of perfumery you know people that are super into niche and exclusive and unique scents and then also people who normally stick with a more mainstream scent i feel like across the board it's very loved and also every time i wear this I get a compliment, like people will literally ask me for the name, like what are you wearing? Another stunner is Bond Number no. 9's Greenwich Village. Now, I just wanna say, before you come for me, okay? The reason I'm giving such a variety of price points is I know that A, my audience has all sorts of budgets, two, maybe you're someone that doesn't want a perfume that's like readily accessible, like maybe you're a beginner into fragrances, but your signature scent, your go-to smell, you want to be something that's more exclusive. That is why there is an array, a variety, a plethora of options. So continuing, this, as I said in a previous video, is literally an ode to femininity. This smells like the color baby pink to me, because of the energy and aura that it gives off, but at the same time, like sky blue because it's fresh and it has this like watery aquatic feel to it. This also has a mouth-watering, airy, whimsical sweetness, similar to the sort of effect with Ariana Grande Cloud, but this is a lot more light, fresh. Cloud 2.0 is creamier, more lactonic. It's a different vibe. This has a juicy, super ripe lychee. So this is not anything tart. It's really just beautiful, juicy fruit. The florals are light, airy, delicate. You have water lily and peony. There's a fresh, clean musk. You get an addictive, light, 
oak moss note in the background. Somehow the praline and vanilla note together give off a bit of a cotton candy vibe. Oh my gosh, it is so addicting. So those are my recommendations. I know that getting into the world of perfume can be very overwhelming. I mean, even myself having tested so many fragrances at this point, I still have a list that just goes on and on and on of so many that I want to try. But I hope this was helpful. Start within whatever category resonates most with you and then go from there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I would appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.